Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Royal Kludge RK96, which is Royal Kludge's newest mechanical keyboard. It only goes for a price of $80 on Amazon and on Royal Kludge's website. Now this keyboard is only available in white and comes in three different switch options, red, blue, and brown. But I would like to point out that the switches in this keyboard aren't actually Gateron or Cherry. They are Royal Kludge's own switches, I believe, and in my opinion, they are worse than, you know, Gateron Reds or Cherry MX Reds as well. The good thing about this keyboard is it is hot swappable, so you can easily remove the switches that sound bad and place them with something else that you would like instead. So this is what they're calling a 90% layout, and I think this looks very similar to a 96% layout or a 1800 layout, but they kind of removed the spacing between the FN row and the number key row. There is also a mute button and a volume knob roller thingy. And of course they both work, but I did notice on the volume knob roller, when rolling it, you kind of accidentally press the star key on your keyboard when rolling it because it's sort of lower than the keycaps. So I wish it was a little bit further above like maybe that spacing between the fn row and the number keys should have been there because of the volume roller inside the box you get the keyboard a wrist stretch that is detachable you get a switch and keycap puller and some extra switches just in case some of them are broken and that's about it so they don't actually give you a manual, but I believe there is software for this keyboard that can be found on Royal Kludge's website. This one only has blue backlighting. So if you weren't a big fan of, you know, like super RGB, then this also might be right up your alley. It's just one static color. It does have the typical 20 modes that it offers, but it just does not change colors. The keyboard right out the box is pretty nice to look at. I don't think the design looks ugly. You know, it's different for sure, but it's nice to see something different. It kind of reminds me of that HyperX layout, considering they have the volume roller as well, I believe. So that is nice to see. Detachable wrist rest is magnetic, so the plate actually has magnets on it, making it towards where the wrist rest can easily attach and be detached from the bottom of the keyboard. It does have two levels of elevation, considering this keyboard is pretty flat. When you lay it down, there isn't really an angle in the first place. So having the two levels of elevation really helped me because I did have to use both levels for me to enjoy typing on this keyboard. With all that said and done, here is a stock sound test. You guys can hear how it sounds. So yeah, I don't really like how it sounds stock. I think the switches sound bad and the stabilizers are very rattly. So we're gonna see if we can try to fix that. On their website, they say they have case foam inside and plate foam as well. But I still heard some pinginess and I think that is just the switches. Now this is a steel plate. So unfortunately, even if you wanted to remove the plate foam, I wouldn't recommend it because then you're going to have a really pingy keyboard. So once we took off all the keycaps, all you have to do with this keyboard is actually just unscrew all the top screws and kind of just like shake it and the top will come off. There are two ribbon cables, just make sure you detach both of them. The reason why there's two is because, well, one is for the battery and one is just for the keyboard to work. And the reason why there's a battery in this keyboard is because it has Bluetooth 5.0 and can support 2.4 gigahertz as well, or your typical USB-C wired connection as well. So it's a triple mode keyboard. Once you take this keyboard apart and 
you take out the numerous screws because this thing has a lot of screws. You can detach the stabilizers because they are plate mounted stabilizers. Now the space bar has foam in between, but I figured it out that if you use a switch puller, you can actually just pull that foam in between the space bar and it'll just pull it out with the switch puller. That makes it towards where you don't have to actually take the plate off of the PCB because the PCB does have screws on the bottom. I didn't think about this, so I actually took it apart. But to save you some time, all you have to do is remove the foam and then take out the space bar stabilizer. Now I kind of went overboard. I thought they would need more lube based on the sound test than what they actually did. So I'm gonna be honest, most of these stabilizers are kind of on the over lube side, especially like the smaller keys. The space bar was kind of a hassle. I had to wire balance it, clip it, and over lube it even more than I did on the smaller stabilizer keys. But even at that, there is some ticking on the right side of the space bar, which I'm not a big fan of. The only good part about the stabilizers, in my opinion, is that they're very tightly secured into the plate. There is no movement, so you don't have to add like band-aid to it. And that is very nice to see. So once I did all of that, I put the stabilizers all back in. And I went ahead and put in my switches of choice. I wanted to stay on the budget friendly side. So if you wanted to follow along and do this yourself, you could easily do so. And I went ahead and picked up some JWIC yellow switches, which are very affordable. Like I think they were considered the best cheap switch on the market for a while. And you know, they feel very nice stock. They do come factory lubed if I do remember correctly. Once I installed those switches, they definitely felt better than whatever Royal Clutch's red switches feel like. So once that was all said and done, I put back the keycaps and the build was basically complete. Here is the final modded sound test of the keyboard. Overall, I'd say this keyboard does lean on the clacky or higher pitch side, but I also think it is more of a quieter board as well. So that is something that some people like and some people don't. For me personally, I just think this board sounds decent, but for the price, I'd say it's pretty good. But other than that, let me know what you guys think about this keyboard in the comments down below. And if you did want to buy it, it'll be in the description below as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.